go ahead. I'm ready. Wait a minute. Okay, let me also record. I will do a Facebook. Just Wait a minute. Um, pause. Uh, one one second, please. Great. Hey, Lisa. Yeah. So you can you can hear me, right? Yes. <clears throat> we are. Live. So uh, I'm going to do a short introduction, but if um, if for whatever reason I start to break up and you can't hear me. Just either go like this or just start. Okay. So, gotcha. Okay. Okay. We'll go ahead. I'm going to record too. Okay. So, and we've got a couple people on, which is great, and uh, a few may, a few more that may be joining us. Um, so, so welcome, welcome to those that have just joined, and uh, thank you for coming again uh, today for part two, um, being hosted by All Life Is Yoga here at uh, La Grasse and Fountain in South Carolina. And uh, if you were here Sunday night, you uh, realize that this is a continuation uh, of what Lisa shared with us on a plant-based natural uh, approach to self-care. Um, we went 90 minutes. And still we didn't complete our presentation. So now we want to complete it. Yes, please, Lisa. Hey, thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. And if you're just jumping in now, I would like to just uh, take a moment to say I'm Lisa Collins, and I am a uh, health and wellness educator with essential oils and a plant-based approach in lots of things that we do. On Sunday night, I'd just like to take about five minutes for a quick recap mm -hmm. in case you missed us. Um, and we had discussed a whole lot about gut health and microbiome and the conditions in our gut do cause a lot of the factors that we're dealing with health issues today. And a lot of the things that we need to consider are um, reducing the toxins and doing so we'd have to educate ourselves a little bit and reading and understanding our labels and knowing our sources and ingredients, eating cleaner, exercising daily and proper sleep. They're all detrimental for homeostasis, which is a very good balance for our bodies to be in a natural, healthy state. There are um, several links that were sent out in an email to um, explain a whole lot of uh, touch points that we discussed. So for you to go back to refer to, because um, it was a lot of information. If you were unable to watch the part one or have not seen it, I believe that Rade could make that link available to you for that uh, part one webinar and also share with you the necessary links to um, support uh, the information there as well. So I encourage you to watch that first and to, so we can understand what affects our health and so that way maybe we can prevent, because I, I like to think of it as root cause and to help our situation because um, we first have to understand what is making our conditions the way they may be for our health before we can address it properly. So those can be emailed upon request. Now I didn't get to finish up on the sleep segment. So I just wanted to touch on that just a tiny bit more before I move into the actual um, essential oils and application and use and how they work and all that good stuff. Sleep is definitely one of the most important things that we need to make a priority in our lives. Um, and while we're sleeping, our bodies are repairing and restoring them ourselves, uh, restoring itself, especially our gut. It is a time that our gut is at rest. And I had discussed even in part one, a little bit about intermittent fasting. And there's several ways to do that. Certainly along with your physician, if you consider any of that to give our, our gut a chance to heal and to detox. Um, but what happens is when there's toxins in our body from some of the uh, environmental exposures and foods we eat and chemicals that might absorb into our body, um, it can uh, disrupt our circadian rhythm, which is the sleep and wake cycles that actually happen uh, naturally in our body. And this cycle takes an important, um, it's an important part of our brain in the pineal gland, the hormone uh, melatonin is produced. Now, as we get older, the melatonin does start to naturally decline 
So we want to start looking for other ways to support that um, via supplementation. And there are other essential oils that can help that. We'll discuss that in a little bit. Um, but this, uh, in the pineal gland, this is where this uh, sleep and wake cycle helps us to know when to fall asleep and when to wake. Um, and without the further, uh, the sleep that we need, there, there could be further disruption that can cause a lot of health issues. So we all know when we have those days of, you know, didn't get enough sleep, we just don't function properly at all. And our attitudes aren't that great either. <laughs> um, so you have to think about what time do you go to sleep at night and, you know, trying to come up with a good uh, routine is important. You know, once in a while we may need to be up late or we can't sleep, but the more routine that we can have, the better. So setting up a good sleep regimen is important, you know, maybe winding down for the night with um, a little bit of light yoga or meditation exercise um, accompanied with uh, oils to diffuse for sleep. We'll talk about some of those in a little while. Um, turning off your electronics earlier, perhaps because they're a stimulant, avoiding food and uh, sugary beverages, alcohol, uh, at least three hours before bedtime is, is a, a good rule of thumb. Um, and the, the other hard thing that may, you may run into, which I've, I think we've, a lot of us may have been there or may still be, is that if you have babies or very small children, um, that that is a part of life and more than likely that will get better. So you just have to grin and bear it and sleep when you can and get through it. And that's hard, and, but hopefully that's definitely temporary. And if you happen to be an around the clock caregiver, you know, these are things that are important because you still have to work and you have to find a way to get your sleep as well. So you just need to do whatever it is you possibly can do and not, and just to make sure that you don't overextend yourself. And, and if you really need help for the time being, you need to get help because you need to get sleep, like assistance in some of that care if it is around the clock. Um, so if you still can't sleep, some other practical solutions I was gonna mention are some natural supplements like a melatonin. And for some people, they say, that doesn't work for me. You want to make sure you always find a good quality because some brands don't have a high percentage of the actual melatonin that we need in them. Um, Plant-based uh, essential oil supplements, such as in Young Living, they have some supplements that have essential oils in it, which actually increase the absorption rate of the, um, the actual vitamin or supplement that we're needing by like 50, 60%. So that's something to consider. Um, lavender, cedar, cedarwood, vetiver, valerian, patchouli. Those are a few essential oils that are very supportive of sleep. And we're going to get into some more um, application methods and stuff shortly. So another thing you can consider is having like a cup of chamomile tea, which has got chamomile has properties to know to be very calming, a warm shower or even a bath. Um, and also limiting caffeine. I mentioned sugar and alcohol, caffeine. Stay away from caffeine. So even green tea could be a little bit too much caffeine before bed. So it depends. Um, believe it or not, even reading could help you be tired. You know, if you're still awake, I say educate yourself. So read books on natural ways to help you get sleep and other approach, natural approaches for life. Um, keep in mind, these things really don't take a lot of effort, just a little bit of your commitment to say, I'm doing this. Self-care is important. A well-rested, healthfully fed, exercised body is going to just set the pace for smoother days, clear mind, clear thinking. Are there any questions before I move on to essential oils and gut health and applications? We're good for now? Okay. Yes. All right. I'm going to share my screen for just one moment on one image here. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes, we can see. Okay. All right. Uh, essential oils have uh, can have a positive effect on our gut microbiome. And some essential oils are effective in decreasing bad bacteria and support good bacteria in our gut as well. It has been suggested that combining probiotics with essential oils can be very effective in improving our gut health. Many studies have shown positive effects on how they can help gut bacteria. None have shown any negative effects. I have a few study findings of reference that I can share with you in just a moment. 
Um, and that might even be sent in a link in a little while, because um, some of the statistics and stuff, I don't want to kill too much time on that, where if I have a few minutes, I'll come back to it. Um, let's see. For example, essential oils containing uh, thyme, oregano, rose, and geranium can suppress small intestinal pathogens, like such as bad bacteria. Essential oils have different effects on human pathogenic in the body. Um, oils good for supporting a healthy gut microbiome, for instance, are like peppermint, caraway, fennel, ginger, clary sage, grapefruit, basil, and that's just to name a few. There are so many, and they have so many specific abilities. We're going to get into that as well shortly. All right. And I think I put this up a little too soon, though, the limbic system and how our sense of smell and aromatherapy. So I'm going to just jump ahead to that. I had switched something earlier, and it was for a reason. But um, Can I ask something yes. here? Yes. So I'm going to... Right, it's me. Um, because um, I have this um, sense, a uh, very interesting sense of uh, what uh, what the smell does. Because what is really smell? Yeah, uh, I, it is the the particles, the particles which travel through air and go in its physical particle. It's not just some air, you know, some kind of fragrance which comes from just spirit. It's not a spiritual sense. It's a very material part which travels and touches our receptacles directly and not only touches, being absorbed by receptacle, put into bloodstream so we know exactly what we are dealing with. And not only, it becomes a most quintessential um kind of cure as as homeopathy is yes going through our receptacles the same the this is a very subtle cure system of some you know um i just never thought of it before but now for the first time i see that it has its material input I, you are muted for some reason um lisa we, i can't hear you i'm sorry Mm, it, is your microphone disconnected or something? It's not really giving in. And can you ask um, what is going on? No, we can't hear you. I can't hear you. Sorry. There's something uh, with your connection to the... Do you see the green light coming up when you speak on the on the microphone. Is it only me who do not hear? Radha, do you hear uh, her? No, I don't hear. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear I'm you. coming in on my phone. I decided for the uh, audio. No, it's can a new microphone system. Oh, Whoops, you're sorry. back. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. okay. I just switched to my computer microphone because I think this microphone has been giving me a little bit of trouble. That could be why. Okay. Am I, am I clear enough? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that one was better, but. Still. I know. Mm. Um, I don't want to waste too much time trying to get it figured out right now. Um, and it's kind of new. <laughs> so I'm still learning on that. But, um, but you're absolutely right. Um, aromatherapy. Um, when in. When they're inhaled, when essential oils are inhaled, the odor impulses are sent to our olfactory part of the brain, the limbic system, as that picture I had up for a little while shown. I figured I'd take it down now, but it passes through actually 50 million smell receptors called cilia, which goes through that limbic system. And it activates the region of the, of the brain, and they can actually go to work to repair and clean those receptor sites to enhance or release emotions from our memory that are stored there including emotions that have been stored in our DNA for previous generations, which I find very interesting. This stuff can go real deep, but we're not going to go too deep tonight. <laughs> um, they work on supporting the whole body and all the systems. But what is a receptor and how does it work? Well, in a nutshell, they basically is like an instruction manual and tell the cells what they need to do. There are protein molecules that have uh, binding sites and then they form different, the different types of molecules. And then it communicates with your brain through electrical signals. So I think that's pretty interesting. So like when you smell lavender, you go, oh, that smells so good. And then you smell a wet dog and you go, ooh, that doesn't smell so good. So that's how the connection, you know, with certain smells. Um, and you had mentioned, 
yesterday, Vladimir, about our taste buds and that they also have receptors. So like when we eat food or drink, uh, it interacts with the saliva and the molecules bind to those taste receptors in our mouth and then come in contact with the nerve cells which then communicate with the particular flavor in your brain. And then we have memory and so on and so forth. Um, another example of receptors is, is, is touch in action. Like, uh, so like even peppermint uh, essential oil, it, it's actually warming on the skin. So you're gonna feel that. Um, so the, when it's applied on our skin an essential oil, it triggers the receptors on our skin as well and it sends a cooling signal to the brain. So that's why you can feel the tingling sensation all over your skin. Anytime you apply or rub or massage and essential oil onto your skin, you experience starts with the sensory, called the sensory receptors. And they're all over our body, very powerful stuff. Um, I guess before I wanna ask a couple questions, ask me if anybody has any questions, um, I have a pretty funny sensory story. Um, I have this muscle rub stuff called Cool Azul and it was late at night and between me and my husband, you know, we have our, you know, aches and pains and whatnot. And um, I don't know how it wound up on his night table, but I said, I says, uh, you know, he goes, can you, you know, put a little bit on my back? So I said, sure. So I put a little bit of massage oil on his back and rubbed it in for a minute and he goes, he goes, that feels kind of weird. He goes, this doesn't feel like the cool azul. And the light was kind of low and I couldn't see. And I looked and I don't know if I grabbed the wrong thing, but it was the tube of toothpaste. And now we use this toothpaste called Thieves and it has essential oils in it also. So it's hot oil. So it brushes your teeth. It's got cloves, cinnamon bark. So it, you know, the bottle was almost the same size. It was a little dark. So basically I put toothpaste on his back, but he said it still helped because it had the, the warming oils in it. So I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> For a sensory thing, <laughs> so you want to be careful. I'm, I'm glad I didn't go to brush my teeth with the with the mus uh, muscle rub because that would have been pretty powerful. Um, okay, is there any questions before I move on to? I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, and even before we get to application and a lot of neat things we can do with essential oils, I do want to talk, touch a little bit about on herbs and Ayurveda as well, and the types of herbs that are good for that. Anybody have any questions at this point? Okay. All right. So herbs, I would like to say, you know, you look at, look at the herbs that are out there and you want to see if you can find an equivalent in the EO. So essential oil, not all of them are every company extracts every possible herb that's out there. But if you can get benefits from herbs, you're just going to get it that much more powerful from the essential oil. So it's just up to you. You could use, I use both really, you know, I use more of the fresh herbs and cooking, but I do have a lot of um, uh, vitality essential oils, which are um, FDA approved for uh, safe consumption. Whereas when you get into oregano and thyme and peppermint and all the citrus oils and basil and majorum list goes on that you can use in cooking as well. But you actually only want to use like one drop of an essential oil versus a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the dried herb. And I can find information on that if anybody wants to know more about that. Um, so for an example, um, uh, herbs that could be good to support the gut since we've been talking a little bit about that, um, marshmallow root, licorice root, uh, fennel, garlic. Eat lots of garlic, it's a natural antibiotic. It is so good for you in so many ways. Ginger, same thing, turmeric, clove, cinnamon, peppermint, they all have so many wonderful properties to keep our immune system strong, have uh, antiviral, antimicrobial properties. It, it's nature's medicine. Um, so we have uh, two types of herbs that are called bitter herbs and carminative, carminative herbs, if I can pronounce that pro appropriately. Um, the carminative herbs are rich and very rich in the volatile EOs um, are warming to the digestive tract, um, better to process digestion, reduce gas, like fennel, cumin, lemon balm, to name a few, dill, nutmeg, there's so many, anise. Then there's bitter herbs. Bitter herbs stimulate the vagus nerve and which stimulates the digestion and can reduce gas and bloating and symptoms of food allergies and indigestion such as chamomile, valerian, dandelion, to name a few. Now, the reason why we talk about these different kinds of herbs, because I understand 
in summary research in Ayurveda, the herbs, there are herbs that you suggest for your dosha type, your unique characteristics and your constitution and how you tend to maybe be. And if you're a pita, which I think clearly I'm a pita that I have studied, um, you tend to maybe have inflammation in the body or skin rashes or allergies. Um, so you would wanna go lean towards your bitter herbs that are cooling in nature, chamomile. Now the herb, chamomile tea, you can have a glass of water with a drop of chamomile essential oil in it. Um, you can add some chamomile to a body cream and apply that to your skin so that you can diffuse chamomile essential oil while you're drinking your chamomile tea out of the herb. So it's pretty cool. You can really give yourself a good dose of chamomile and calm yourself down. Um, but you can also take that along with some warming herbs like ginger and cardamom for a healthy balance. So you still wanna enjoy the herbs you would like to enjoy. Then in bitter herbs, um, in the cooling nature taken along with the warming herbs, like I said, you got your uh, vata. Vata tend to be aggravated, bloating, anxiety. That could be some of the negative characteristics. Of course, we wanna eliminate the negative and make it move towards the positive. So you need more of the car carminative type warming herbs, ginger, ashwagandha, peppermint. And then the same goes for the kapha where they can also have some aggravation, bloating. I'm sorry, wrong one. Um, sinus and congestion. Yeah, that's the, the kapha and, and weight gain, which contributes to some of that congestion and sinus as well. Um, you wanna go with more of the carminative warming herbs. Um, such as the turmeric and ginger. And that's just a brief touch on that, um, but I wanted to at least mention that because they, you know, I know that in Ayurveda, herbs and even use of essential oils is, is definitely um, something that is prevalent. Are there any questions? Okay. All right, so what are essential oils? Let's just get into that for just a minute. Um, they are actually vital fluids of the plant. They are the plant's lifeblood defense mechanism, and they are what the plant needs to stay alive. Well, guess what? They can help out us humans too. Um, we can get the essential oil from leaves, rinds, bark, roots of the plant, stems, so many parts of the plant, wherever they can get that volatile liquid from. And they're not really oils, like oily where it can stain, uh, like a carrier oil, such as coconut oil or vegetable oil, because um, they do not contain fatty acids like olive oil or coconut oil, which are wonderful for diluting essential oils with. And we refer to those as carrier oils, um, which reduces the absorption rate into the skin. So for example, if I just banged my knee and I want to tone it down, cool it down, and give it a little bit of uh, anti-inflammatory property help. I will put some peppermint, a couple drops right on my knee. But now if it's a little bit hot, a little hotter than I would like, I could just put a little couple drops, a little, you know, finger dab of some coconut oil, mix it right in there, slows down the absorption rate. You're still gonna get the benefits. You're still gonna get the help, but it just won't feel as hot. I could put it straight on. I'm like, that feels good. I want the warmer, the better. <laughs> Um, but they absorb into your skin very quickly and go to work on a cellular level fast. Um, that's what's kind of neat about essential oils. Um, but you know, there are times when like, I don't really, honestly, for myself, I don't take ibuprofen anymore for a headache and stuff like that. I use my essential oils and sometimes I have to wait about 10 minutes for it to really feel like it's penetrating, resonating, and going to work because, you know, your body still has to work and understand what it's receiving and do its thing. Um, but they are wonderful. And it's just so easy to just grab a quick little boop, 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 and not have to worry about side effects and some of the other junk and the medicines. If we can avoid it, always try a natural approach first. And if that doesn't work, you talk with your physician, you see what you can do but always talk with your physician before using essential oils uh, and, and herbs for that matter with health conditions such as pregnancy, epilepsy. Um, if you're on other medications, there can be some interaction. So it's always good to consult your physician and have a reference guide of some sort. Um, I had mentioned this yesterday, but I would like to just mention it one more 
over time briefly, um, life science publishers, um, I can also send those links later, have a reference guide such as this. And it has from A to Z, um, all many, as many herbs as you can imagine, um, essential oil, this is more of an essential oil, um, but when they discuss the properties and what they're good for and how they could be used in recipes, you probably get the same benefits from herbs too, but keeping in mind, you would need that many more pounds of herbs to equal one drop of essential oil. So you can really do some amazing medicinal um, uh, approach using essential oils um, as well. Oh, and there's also, and now these couple of ones from uh, Life Science Publishers, uh, they happen to be Young Living Friendly as far as the single oils and the blends that they carry, but so does many other companies. I would just caution you to be very particular on the company you choose. You want a good quality oil. We're going to talk about that a little bit in, in a minute. Here's another reference guide I showed yesterday, but since we are going to talk about essential oils more today, um, a desk reference guide like this is incredible. Uh, you can find this, just everything you need in there to get started um, from soup to nuts, and you can just take it low and slow, one thing at a time. So, all right, how do essential oils work? We did that part already. Now I want to talk about how fast they work. Are there any questions before I move forward? No? Okay. All right, there are three main um, properties of essential oils. There are many, but the ones that are the most um, prominent that do a lot of the work, like cleaning receptor cells, as we discussed before, you have phenols that clean and repair damaged receptor sites, okay? Um, so in having natural abilities to do so, uh, oils that might be high in phenols would be like oregano, cinnamon bark, basil, clove, some of the oils I make up my immune roller with right here for immune support. And I will show you a little bit later how I would do that. Um, very, very simple to do. Takes only five minutes to whip up a quick little roller to apply to support your immune, your immunity every day. Um, okay, then you have something called terpenes. Sometimes I mispronounce that. And that is um, the ability to bring oxygen to the blood brain barrier, which is your emotional processing center and can potentially help to uh, erase or reprogram miswritten codes. There is studies and research out there all over the place. Um, and it's just amazing. Um, uh, oils high in cisquitropines, I have to say it slowly, is cedarwood and vetiver, for example. Um, frankincense, very high. Lavender, myrrh. Um, and essential oils have actually like just, they're so small that they can, the reason why they can uh, break through the blood brain barrier is because there's actually 40 million trillion molecules like in just one drop of essential oil. And so they could basically go through all the various systems in your body produce responses it needs. And it's almost like as if it knows where to go in the body and what it needs. Um, so like for instance, if our bodies receive some lavender, um, some of its natural constituents that it's, so it could be calming or relaxing, um, uh, it, it, it will it'll just go and do that. It just knows how to do it. I, I wish I can explain how it happens, but it just, it just works. <laughs> um, and the other one is monoterpenes. Um, they actually can help to reprogram cells and, and to, to do what they're supposed to do. Um, orange, grapefruit, balsam fir are some to name a few. And what I like about the um, reference guide, and there's even an app that you can um, download from um, a link from a life science publisher, I think it's like $7. Um, and you can go in there and you can, when you click on an oil, it'll tell you the constituents that are in it, what its abilities are and recommendations and safety and that helps. So I usually pick one at a time. Like if I need to research the oils, I go into sleep and I see the oils recommended for sleep. And that's where I start. Um, you don't have to use all of them, you pick one, you try that and then you go from there. But I like the fact that you, you know, you have a little support even from a book, but 
you know, then you can go to a person like myself and I can be somebody of on ongoing support and I'll get into that later as well. Um, okay, all right, I said the reference guide. Now, um, and here's another interesting fact. Each a drop of essential oil has anywhere from 80 to 300 chemical constituents and each one of those has a job. That is just astounding to me. So if you actually create a blend, you could be going into the thousands of constituents that are going to work to do different things. And you're covering a lot of bases there. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, so I know it from the computer. Okay. Yeah. I seen she jumped off for a minute. Um, so each constituent has a job and there's so much that they could do. So you may be trying to address one thing, like maybe you're having a little bit of a headache or migraine or something to help relax or go to sleep. And that oil that you chose could be going into your body and doing other wonderful things at the same time. So that's pretty cool. So they can restore, revive, and even potentially reprogram some of our, our very cells. So uh, let me understand. You mean that um, actually it can never be uh, damaging in some way. It will be always beneficial in some way to other parts of our being and, uh, and you know, and existence. I believe so. I would have to caution, though. You know, you don't want to, you can't go drink in a whole bottle of you know lavender or something. I mean, you certainly don't want to over. At moderation is the key to everything. I'll apply. I'm going to go over about my daily routine a little while, a little bit in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, a few times throughout the day. Um, you know, I think. I guess you can go a little overboard, but it's, it's the, the the most overboard you can go with essential oils is if you chose the probably more of the ingestion route, if you were to do dietary. And we're going to talk about that shortly. So, you do, you know, plants are medicine. They can be dangerous too. So we do, that's why a good reference guide is important because it does have safety and, you know, you have to learn a little bit before you do it. Just like any other modern medicine we get, it comes with a list of things. You know, essential oils aren't even that usually nerve wracking because it doesn't have like a gazillion side effects. <laughs> you know, they just recommend a couple drops and then just stick to that. You know, you can take too many drops internally. That's, it could do just some damage. I would, yes. Yeah, so, and we definitely wouldn't want to have something like penny oil because that's, you know, poison. <laughs> So not every plant is safe to ingest or to apply topically. And that's why it's important to be part of a support group, have a reference guide, do a little bit of homework first, and just make sure you're, you know, erring on the safe side. Um, lavender, one quick mention of lavender. I think I mentioned this yesterday. It's like a Swiss army knife because they can support burns and sleep and stress and respiratory and bruising. They, lavender alone has 200, 200 chemical constituents in just one drop. So that's on the higher end of the amount of properties that lavender has. I, I just think it's incredible. Okay, and without the harmful side effects is, is usually the coolest thing is that we can apply and, and, and use and benefit from essential oils in a way with a lot less worry um, than some of the modern meds. Now we might need modern meds, again, talk to your physician because I'm only, um, sharing what I've learned and some of the resources that I have, um, but the studies are out there and essential oils are amazing. Now, I just want to share, let's see if I can do a quick screen share. Still kind of getting, trying to get familiar with screen sharing here. Why well, won't let me show you. You have to click on a share screen and then choose the screen you want to show. Mm -hmm. Or double click on the desktop. Yeah, we can see it. All right, what are you seeing right now? We can, uh, we see several pictures. Um, yeah. Do many. you see just one picture now? No, many pictures. We see okay. a desktop. Desktop. Okay. Everything. So you choose on the desktop what you want us to see. Hmm. Yeah, I thought I picked that and it's just not, when I click on the one picture I want you to see, it's showing it big on my end, but not on your end. Oh, it's weird. It should be on both ends. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. If you if you go back again 
mm, stop sharing yeah? just stop sharing and then i'll start sharing and if you double click on desktop we will see what you see exactly the same okay. so the, the first window you double click which is already selected all right let's see sticky notes all right now i don't even have my documents are open correctly well you know what i'm just gonna Okay. I'm having a little bit of difficulty at the moment, so I'm not gonna, I don't wanna spend too much time. It was just a little bit of visual. Um, uh, basically, when you apply an essential oil um, in 26 seconds, it will reach the blood system. In two minutes, it will reach your circulatory system. And within 26 to 28 minutes, it will penetrate every cell wall in your body. So in less than 30 minutes, like I was saying before, some things can take a little bit of time, it will it reach your entire body. Um, and because the molecules are so tiny, they can work on a level that is, is molecular, cellular. Um, okay, um, I, I'm gonna be sending links later on, just so everybody knows, uh, uh, babies and children's safety guide too, and essential oil applications because that's very important to have some extra links on, you know, guidelines there. Um, Cause there are guidelines to help you administer and apply oil safely. Um, because a lot of people go, how many drops and how many, you know, so that's going to be important to know. Um, so basically uh, you, what you say is that essential oils are very powerful actually. Uh, um, media for for us and, and can be also dangerous and can be very supportive so it's not a small thing to look at it's right. something much more powerful than we assume it is and you know if, if so if you're just going to decide to take it on and you know i i don't want to say it's such a, a scary thing because even when i started using it i was like okay and then you know i just read the instructions on a couple things and okay i'm going to try this first and i started with stuff for sleep and something for just uh for me for pain my back i have a bad back i have uh, herniated discs and a slightly torn rotator cuff and i haven't had to have surgery i use these oils daily uh, apply them and I get relief and I believe I'm getting healing from it as well because it's just not some modern meds unfortunately only have the ability to mask temporarily give you relief and really do nothing about the root cause I believe and the research is there that essential oils have the abilities to actually heal like we talked about restore repair uh reprogram and um I don't think it's a coincidence the the healthier way I've been feeling experiencing over six almost seven years now that I've been using essential oils. Um, so Wait, yeah. if you can hear me or not, I'm, I had to transfer to my phone. So sorry, I'm coming oh, in. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad uh, you're still there. Just, yeah, just just to follow up on on Vladimir's uh, comment slash question is, you know, really the way that I've been taught, and I think you said this earlier, it's the digestible essential oils that you have to be very, very careful. Yes. And not to digest those that shouldn't be digested, right? People get a little carried away sometimes and don't realize that many of them are never meant to be uh, uh, digested straight. Yes. straight. And even those that are have the potential to, to be the most problematic if you don't use the right dosage. So I just want I just wanted to add that kind of comment in there. Absolutely. And I promise you we're going to get into just three ways now how we to use them. And we are going to touch a little bit more on the actual digestive way and, and a little bit of the caution and what to understand about that. So okay. So I'm I'm going to be sending links to everybody later on how to use them, ways to use them, and uh, all kinds of good stuff. So if you don't worry about writing anything down, just just listen, enjoy, and you're gonna get the recap in links and everything you'll need and you'll be able to contact me. Um, so three ways to use essential oils. We um, had discussed about the uh, aromatherapy earlier, and that would be in a diffuser. And I think, let me see if I, yeah, I have a, a aromatic thing down here. Let me do that first and I'll jump back. Okay. Um, so that's a great way to get the molecular abilities of these plants into our body just simply by, ha I have one behind me, a diffuser. And I love to usually keep it right close to my desk or, you know, right by my bedside. I have one in my kitchen. I have to confess, I have like eight essential uh, diffusers in my house and even one in the garage for my dog. 
because it does calm her down when she's uh, rambunctious and you know she's an older dog so we use lavender and some other blends for her that seems to really chill her out and I'll even put a little bit on my hands and, and just uh, brush her coat but now I'm not going to talk about animals and essential oils that's another whole ball of wax again it's the quality of the oil. There are much, much more um, guidelines for animals and essential oils. If anybody's interested and needs to know more about that, they can contact me and I can be glad to share tons of information um, because that is just as important, if not more important, because they are different creatures than we are and especially cats compared to um, dogs but animals can actually benefit from essential oils as well. Um, and back to Young Living, that's another reason why I do like them because they do also have their own team of veterinarians and they even created an entire uh, guidebook similar to the one I just showed you before. Um, I have it up there, I don't wanna get up in the middle of the show here, but. <laughs> um, and it is yay thick on how to, and safety and everything essential oils with animals, including equine for horse, you know, horses, rabbits, all kinds of farm animals, dogs, cats, it's, it's incredible. Um, so that's a neat thing to know. But just simple aromatherapy, and you don't have to have just a diffuser to do aromatherapy where you'll put somewhere around four to six drops in with distilled water or just you could do tap water, but the, the cleaner the water, the less buildup you'll get in your diffuser. Um, and then just run it and you can hang over it for a minute. And then as, if it's just in the room with you, you are breathing in all of these benefits. They are going into your body and working. That, that's what's happening. It's amazing. You can also just put a couple drops of an essential oil on your hand. You just put one drop on your hand and you rub it in and then you can take a few deep breaths and there you have it. That's aromatherapy too. Um, okay. Uh, Let's see, I wanted to jump back to topical application. Now, when you put an essential oil straight on, in, on your hand or on your skin, straight, when I mean straight, by not diluting it with anything, because these essential oils are pure and straight, and that's what you wanna make sure you have. Nothing that's got added fillers and dilution. There's other things to look out for, we'll talk about in a minute. Um, that is called neat, to apply neat, straight in the bottle. Um, but I think a better and safer way until you get more familiar with essential oils is to use the fatty acid carrier oils like I discussed before to dilute them with, such as coconut oil. Um, I also use, um, this is called a V6 vegetable complex, but it's got like a, all the good essential uh, carrier oils, uh, coconut oil and uh, sunflower oil and jojoba oil and a lot of other good uh, oils to blend. Um, to be careful for skin sensitivities, because some people have skin sensitivities as well. Um, and then the, again, for the warming oils. Um, but topical is because we have the skin has the sense, the senses too, and the cell receptors. So we're going to benefit topical application. My favorite way is making rollers. And I talked about that before. Um, essentially, um, this is a 10 milliliter bottle. You can go anywhere online to this, just Google essential oil accessories. There's certainly there's plenty of them on Amazon, uh, essential oil supply store. There's just tons of them. And you know, you just shop to find the prices you like. And I mean, they're relatively not much more than about a dollar, an empty bottle. And I make up my own labels. You don't have to, you could just put a piece of tape and label it um, avery.com and you can buy labels and you can create your own little labels and have a little fun if you're into doing a little graphic stuff. Um, so for instance, this is my immune boost roller. There's one on my night table, one on my husband's night table. My kids each have one. Um, so this blend, I have uh, cinnamon bark, clove, lemon, uh, eucalyptus, frankincense, oregano, and grapeseed oil. Oh, grapeseed oil is my favorite carrier oil, by the way. And so I probably do like anywhere from five to 10 drops of each. I have some specific recipes I like to follow. And so maybe 30 to 40 drops total of an essential oil in here, take me about here. And then I fill the rest of the carrier. And then I gently do this and I just created my own immunity blend. Um, you can, there's recipes for, and I'd be glad to share any of these recipes. And I will be sharing two recipes today, specifically one for sleep and relax and calm. 
and one for digestion, tummy troubles. Um, allergies. Um, there are essential oils with abilities to um, have natural antihistamine uh, effect and um, go to work for that. So lemon, lavender, peppermint, copaiba, carrier oil, apply, breathe it in, neck, bottom of the feet, Vitaflex points. We're going to get into applications in just a minute. Um, Vitaflex are a great way. Outer ears, your ears are another Vitaflex to get into your body. Um, okay, so that's my my favorite way is the rollers. I wish I could share my screen right now because I really wanted to show. My husband made me a, um, a, an essential oil cabinet, like a medicine cabinet, but I wanted it to be a natural health cabinet. And I put my oils in there and some of my rollers in there, but they're also all over the house. They're in my pocketbook and on our night tables and in the kitchen, wherever we grab them and go, because it's part of our lifestyle now. That it's sooner or later, it just can become part of your lifestyle and it's just so easy. So instead of grabbing for uh, going to the store to get these nasal inhalers and ibuprofens and all these other muscle creams with hundreds of chemicals, we just take a few minutes with the essential oils that we've, you know, made sure we eventually stocked up on. And then we just make up a few things and then these last us. So I'm not like constantly making stuff cause I don't have time to do that all day long either. Um, we make- You can try to, to project again, it must work. Yeah. All right, let's see, like it must work. All right, let's see. I'll show see if I could show the cabinet and then I want to go to the Vitaflex. We're going to talk about um, application methods there. Um, all right, share screen. Screen two. Double click on the screen, what you want to show. Yes, we can see it. Do you see ways I use essential oils? Yes. Hey. All right, I did it. <laughs> I've done it before, but I don't know what I'm doing. Beautiful, doing beautiful cabinet. Okay. So it's a little cabinet, and you know, on the bottom here, I have a little oh, grape seed oil or carrier oil. I'll keep it in a little bottle like this, so that way, when you want to, you know, when I add in an essential oil into a, a roller, I mean, of course, you'd have to take the top off and the roll of fitament, it's called, and this pops out, not super easy. So you got to kind of play around a little bit. I usually take like a paper towel and then go like this and then it pops out. The cap can actually pop it out too, but I've cracked the caps doing that. So, but you, you know, you put in your drops, whatever the recipe you might have that you're going to make something. And then once you pour in your drops, you count, take a minute or so. Oh, some essential oils come out real fast. Some come out really slow, like vetiver. Vetiver, and that it's got a thicker viscosity of the oil. That's why it's just so thick, like maple syrup or something like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just the way that essential oil is. Um, but having this to drop in the carrier oil, it just makes it easier than trying to, a uh, big bottle to try to dump into the little tiny 10 ml. So these little dropper bottles, I fill it with carrier oil and then use the dropper to add the carrier oil to, to there. So it's, it's pretty, pretty basic. Um, so, but basically, as you can see, and here, I'm just saying that I use uh, essential oils to support every one of my body systems for every one of my needs, whatever it is. Um, I, I love to, I love to do the DIY. Now there are some essential oil companies that make everything for you. Young Living certainly does, um, which is one of the ones I support. Um, they make a lot of blends for you. So if you're not into making anything yourself, no worries, they make a lot of blends. I like to make them because I get to customize them a little bit and it definitely is easier on the wallet. So to do it that way. And then you have this big bottle of oil left over after I pulled out 10 drops, I still have, you know, 80 drops in a five ML, or if I got a 15 ML uh, bottle, I have almost 300 drops. So this is gonna last me for months and months and months and months and months, maybe even a year or longer as I pull what I want from it for whatever I'm making. Um, so my cabinet, you know, and then every month I have a couple things, I'll pick up this or that. And when I'm just like, if you go on grocery shopping, that's, you know, instead of going buying ibuprofen and uh, muscle rub, I'll say, okay, I need uh, lavender and uh, frankincense this month or something like that. And then that's how I'll go from there. Um, 
Okay, so I uh, will be. Can you can you also experiment with this and see what it does to, for you? I sort of say learn from it. Yeah, I mean you can. I mean, like I, I definitely recommend the reference guide. So, like, if you want to um, go beyond lavender for sleep, for instance, I keep going back to sleep, but uh, you look up sleep and you see what oils are recommended. You know, and if you come across valerian, for instance. And you know, you read and it has, you know, properties that will like neurotoxins, they'll put you to sleep, you know, they'll calm you down. Um, so you can try it and see how it helps you because some people like lavender might not help them for sleep. They might need something a little stronger. So, like when I make a sleep roller that I'm sharing in the recipe and the links today, I put lavender, valerian, vetiver. Now, valerian stinky oil, but it is an amazing oil. So I will put 10 drops of lavender, eight drops of, uh, uh, three drops of vetiver, three drops of patchouli, because those are strong too. And patchouli is another one good for sleep, but only one drop of layering because it's a strong smelling essential oil, but very effective. But yeah, there's no reason why you can't experiment a little bit. I would try to stay within the parameters of what is this oil good for? What is it that you're wanting to address? And then you go from there and then you can, with if there's 10 different recommended oils, you know, and you may not like the smell of one oil that just bothers you, or you may love, and here's another thing, your body knows if you smell an oil and you're drawn to it, your body needs it. You know, Lisa, I'll just also uh, jump in here for a second. It's, this is a, a really interesting question that uh, Vladimir has brought up. I had um, my Ayurvedic teacher who was also a aromatherapist. She worked a lot with the Bach flower remedies. And um, if you came to her with a particular issue or problem you were trying to solve that she felt that one of the Bach flower remedies could solve, what she would do is, is exactly what you said. First, kind of limit it down to three or four that are very specific for that. And then she would just tell you, you know, why don't you meditate on it? Why don't you contemplate? Why don't you kind of see what you're drawn to? and pick that one that you want to try. So using a little bit of intuition, but first kind of narrowing it down. So at least, you know, you're within the right parameters, Right. but, but, but connecting, connecting on a more subtle level with what uh, essential oils may work for you and which may not. And, and then experimenting like uh, Vladimir mentioned. Absolutely. Yep. That's, that's the way to go. And you know, the, when you, the more you start to do it and you start to get the benefits or feel like, all right, this worked or this helped, or I like this, Fast forward, boom, all of a sudden, six months or a year later, you're drawn to them, you're using them, you're not missing the other stuff you were using before. And you're like, oh, thank gosh, I have this. And thank gosh, I have this. And right at the drop of a hat, you know, because after, you know, once you get started, like for me, it was a little bit of a fever, but, you know, I started getting the oils, getting the oils, getting the oils. And I'm on a monthly thing where I get, you know, I change what I need every month or whatever. But I keep my oil cabinet stocked in a way that I would keep my, um, pantry stocks for feeding my family because it's also the medicinal needs that we have in so many ways. You know, like I have a throat spray um, with cinnamon bar, clove, and lemon and uh, water. And it's a mouth spray, it's a throat spray if we have a little bit of uh, sore throat or something like that. And uh, it works wonders. And it doesn't take really that, it's like pennies, uh, drops, uh, pennies per drop you know, eight cents a drop, 10 cents a drop. So you can do the math, you know, frankincense a little higher. I think it's like 15 cents a drop, but you know, you can make some quick, simple, easy remedies, daily common needs, if you will, for, you know, a few dollars here and there, um, the same or even less, you know, in the long run, you know, you, you get the initial investment of picking up the essential oils, but then what you're able to produce from that one bottle over a period of time for so many different things, it's almost like mind boggling that what, what, what you can accomplish, you know, and the home cleaning. Oh, don't even start on that. Cause I mean, it's just amazing to be able to clean a home with essential oil stuff. Um, just uh, one of the things that you can make your own cleaning products um, and you know, that may not be for today, um, but I know that Young Living sells uh, Thieves Cleaning Line and some people may have already heard of it. It's phenomenal. It's plant-based with the cinnamon bark and the clove and the lemon and um, peppermint and stuff like that. 
the stuff is concentrated. Um, you get this big bottle, for instance, it's a concentrated plant-based and by concentrated, so what I mean is it's in the $24 range for this bottle, but you can get probably about mm, 20 something spray bottles full of cleaning products out of it. So it'd be less than a dollar for a big spray bottle of cleaning because you only need a cap full, maybe two, and then you fill it with water. That's it. I clean everything with it. The bathroom, the counters, the, the mirrors, doesn't streak, everything. It's fantastic. So it eliminates all these other chemical cleaners that I no longer use anymore. And those add up price wise too. You start getting into and the chemicals and the toxin in our body. So we, we want we, we want to place our order <laughs> immediately, Lisa. <laughs> That sounds absolutely phenomenal because, you know, we're using four or five, six different types of uh, cleaning solutions for different things. And, yeah. and here you can buy one to do like 90% of what you need. Yep. That, I'm, that's I'm, I'm so done with it. And I'm so happy with it. Yeah. That's one of the most favorites of uh, yeah. people that use Young Living is the Thieves Cleaning line is phenomenal. Um, I'm, I'm about to go to the ingest oils because I know we're getting, we've got to start watching the time. And uh, we'll, you know, after that, we'll wrap up with a few, a few odds and ends, maybe some questions. Um, I had mentioned too, like uh, this is a foaming pump, like if people like foaming soap, hand soap, for instance. Um, I like it straight from a regular soap dispenser. So there's choices. I buy Castile soap online, uh, usually a big bottle, like about this size. I don't have the Castile soap in front of me. Um, I'm gonna be like maybe nine or $10 of the, the Castile soap, wherever, you know you choose to shop online. Um, Young Living doesn't sell Castile soap in particular, but I will take the Castile soap and to make a foaming hand soap. Now in the stores, a foaming hand soap could run three, $4, right? Maybe two fifty dollars or something like that. And the ingredient list is long. Well, I put in unscented Castile soap, only a tablespoon, and then the rest is water. And I think, uh, I think it's like a tablespoon of witch hazel, the low alcohol content. And then you add in 15 to 20 drops of your favorite essential oils or ones that are good for microbial effects like cinnamon bark and clove. And, but if you're tired of those smells, you don't have to do that. You could do frankincense and you could do lavender, lemongrass. You can make your own foaming soap. Our house has all hand soaps throughout the whole house. So we've ditched and switched. We've eliminated all of those chemicals. So that's another good way to start. Um, I was telling you about the Flarisol bottles yesterday. Here it is. And you can spray. This is just essential oils, water, and witch hazel, and a little bit of witch hazel. Um, I think it just helps bind the molecules of the essential oils a little bit better. And that's our room sprays, our bathroom sprays. So no plugins, no uh, other sprays loaded with chemicals. Chem we are killing ourselves and poisoning ourselves in the house with the cleaning and the plugins and the, all these other products that we put on our bodies every day. And you know, so there's to switch takes just a little bit of time and effort and commitment, but it is so worth it because once you do, you're going to be healthy, you're going to feel healthier. And if you have young kids, you're going to start setting them up for thinking that way later on in life and, and, and being mindful of their choices that can affect their gut health, their reproductive systems. Um, just saying with the, the amount of plastics uh, in, in everything out there that the, they're saying that the reproduction might be a major issue in 2050. My son was just telling me about it. I was like, I'm proud of you finding a resource like that. You know, so I want to get that resource and read on about it a little bit more. But it's alarming. But I really think if we start making choices for ourselves, our families, you know, that's a good thing, you know. Um, and maybe the healthcare situation will work out. Who knows? Because it's just, it's not being done right. Um, okay. Ingesting essential oils, dietary support. I have to mention Young Living because I don't know any other company that has this. They have a vitality line with white labels like this. And they are grass. GRAS generally generally regarded as safe. They have been FDA approved for consumption. The reason why they put the white label on it versus not a white label, for instance, is because that way it's easily identifiable as a oil that is safe to ingest. Now, not like drink out of the bottle ingest, 
but that, you know, like there's certain oils like tea tree, you cannot ingest tea tree. So if you were to shop for their essential oils you and you want to go the dietary route, you would like, you really want to make sure you're getting a pure, good quality essential oil that is pure as possible, especially if you're going to use it medicinally and ingest dietary. A way you can do that is with a um, taking it in a vegetable capsule. I wish I had the bottle in front of me. I was trying to think earlier, everything I wanted to show. Um, it looks like a regular gel capsule, like you would buy any supplement. They're clear vegetable capsules. Um, they sell them and you can buy them online too. Um, and basically you just put in one drop. I always say to start off low. Some people do three or four drops in one drop. So let's just say you want to try and um, you're having a little bit of digestive issues for an example, and then we'll move on because I can give links and so much other stuff later. Um, one drop of ginger, maybe even a drop of peppermint. And then I put a little bit of carrier oil in there, a little bit of grapeseed oil in that capsule just to help it dilute a little bit so it doesn't hit your stomach super hard. And that's where the capsule comes in, in, into play because it's uh, a special coating. I think it's called uh, ent ent enteric coating. Uh, it's a special uh, coating that will not degrade the essential oil before by the acids of your stomach before it gets time released to go and do what it needs to do, for instance. So that's a, a, a good way. And some people will, uh, you could take, put one drop of, let's just say the ginger, if you're looking for a subtle your stomach a little bit, um, or if you have a uh, reflux, put a drop in uh, like a, a honey, a teaspoon of honey or in a, a cup of tea. So there are other ways to, to ingest um, if you didn't want to do the capsule route. Um, the Vitality line you can absolutely use for cooking. I'll put a drop of basil in my tomato sauce, a big pot, only one drop because it's strong, or a drop of oregano. Um, oregano, I'll sometimes even just do a toothpick dip in the, and then disperse it that way because oregano is very strong. Um, citrus oils, I'll put a drop of the lemon, the grapefruit, great for eliminating toxins and for digestion and reflux. Um, and a drop of in water. I put a drop, one drop of my water. And sometimes I'll put a little pinch of salt in there or a little pinch of sugar, but a little pinch of salt preferably because it'll just help the molecules bind to it. So you're not, your first sip isn't all lemon, it disperses through the glass of water. That's another great way. Um, all right. Uh, one more last thing I wanted to talk about the a recipe I'm going to send in the links later for like a tummy roller, a good way to apply that because you want, might need it later is on the stomach and you rub it into your tummy just like that. And I wanted to show the Vitaflex chart real quick. So I'm going to do a quick screen share. And are we okay to go over a few more minutes here? Yes. Okay. All right. Here is the some Vitaflex charts. Okay. Now, um, you got your feet, your ear. Now, I know you can't read everything around it, but it is to all parts of the body. So basically, I just cover the whole ear. I like I cover it all because <laughs> it's hard to just get that one little spot or it'll say the bottom of your toe. You can just put something on the bottom of your big toe to cover your pituitary gland. But I just, you know, whatever it is I want to address, I'll just rub, rub it on the bottom of my feet. It's going to all go and do good stuff. I haven't had any problems. Um, you can massage is another way as well. Um, even your hands have Vitaflex. So even just when you're doing aromatherapy, you're already Vitaflexing into your body. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, now in Ayurveda, which I don't have charts, but I know that you guys might be able to provide if anybody wants, there are, uh, you, the way that they look at it is called the Marma points that I believe. And there are certain application areas of the body for uh, essential oils to go in. Um, so if you were looking to stick to the Ayurveda, you would want to use your marma points. Um, but basically, you know, just topical applications on your body, you're going to get the benefits. But, you know, there is a lot about being specific on what parts of the body. Did I um, stop screen share? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, so if, if you're willing, when we send out the links after this program for other stuff, I'll send you the links for everyone. If you wanted to include a link for um, Marma points, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, great. Okay. Um, yes, there's one other 
a thing that I think I need to screen share real quick. And that is about um, not all oils are created equal. And um, that is where we would be getting into some safety stuff um, that I would be concerned about because are we seeing not oils are created equal? Yes. Okay. Um, there are different grades of essential oils and some of them are really only known as floral waters. Like if you actually pick up an essential oil from a gas station or something for like $5 for lavender, I'm sorry, but you are not gonna be getting an essential oil that is to be considered safe for um, medicinal use. Um, you know, you, you even on the back of some of the boxes of the essential oil sold in some, soup, some stores, some other local stores and stuff actually say on the back and the bottom in small print, do not, do not inhale. So, you know, I would really consider doing a little homework and there are only a few companies out there that I look at their practices. I'm gonna include a link in the stuff we're gonna send later for seed to seal practices that Young Living does from having virgin soil uh, and they have it tested for no chemicals uh, to every distillation step that they do. If something gets overheated, by a lower grade essential oil, it could still, there's no regulation there. They may pass it through. They add synthetics, other chemicals, um, things that could be very harmful to us. And I like the disclosure Young Living has and you can visit their farms and every step of the way they have their scientists, the practices, they're mindful of global impact community. They have a foundation that helps people as well. It's just phenomenal. So, but they have very good quality. There are a few other companies out there just do your research. That is the most important thing you can do because you definitely don't want to especially consider ingesting an essential oil. Um, just because it's $10 cheaper, you could be harming your health. Um, okay. Uh, I guess finally, with a little practical tips, just everywhere you can ditch and switch in your house, it's start low and slow. Maybe you choose with your foaming hand soap. Um, you know, when I, back to uh, healthier eating the other day, you know, maybe switching some of the snacks in your home for your kids. Uh, start looking at the ingredients that you're, uh, that I sent all the links, the links are sent out. We could send them to other people too with the list from the environmental working group um, of ingredients. So start being mindful of, stay away from your preservatives, your artificial dyes, eat clean and healthy, lots of vegetables, lean meat, fish. It's pretty simple. This information has been out there now. It's out there. You just couple of quick Google searches. And I just can't be passionate enough just to take the time because your health is so worth it. And there's so many other neat things that you can do. Um, I'm gonna tell you about my daily routine and then we're gonna, we'll wrap it up from there. And I'm, I'm also gonna send links to everybody about my services. And if you wanted to get started uh, with, with me, with support with Young Living and how that all works, um, if anybody has questions before I get off on, on that, I can answer them live or we can um, you know, chat with anybody afterwards or through via email. Um, and I love to support people because I once was given support when I first got started and that was detrimental. It was detrimental. And um, okay, so in the morning I will apply essential oil that will be uplifting for me. Um, you know, it could be a citrusy oil. Um, I have a blend that actually has rose and jasmine and some other oils in there and makes me feel good. Um, while I'm exercising, I'll do a little bit of yoga, late morning, you know, early morning, late morning, midday, never too late, I get too tired. But I, I make sure I squeeze it in 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day without exception, because that is very integral into your whole health. It's not just eating healthy, it's the sleep, it's the exercise. We have to do all of those things, not just one of those things, because otherwise it's just not gonna work. Um, and you have to stay committed. Yes, we can cheat once in a while, but um, so that's that. Um, I add lemon to my water in the morning. I do have a cup of coffee every morning <clears throat> with, a, with a, one to two teaspoons of honey. It's still sugar, but it's still one of the better choices of sugar. Um, it took me a while to do that, but I love honey's got amazing benefits, especially if you buy local raw honey, I would recommend. Um, and uh, sometimes I'll have tea with lemon too and uh, with honey. I also have uh, one ounce of Ninja Red every day, which is a um, total body antioxidant uh, supplement drink that Young Living provides. And um, I could send a link on the Ninja Red too. It's incredible. It's delicious. And then 
I just take one ounce a day and it gives me lots of vitamins. Um, I take many supplements um, for my joints, bones, digestion, gut, immune system, antioxidants, cardiovascular skin. If anybody wants to know more about them, I'd be glad to share it with them in a private message. Um, I'll just name them, but they're Sulfurzyme, Allerzyme, Essentialzyme, stuff for digestion. Sulfurzyme is good for, for bones and joints. Multigreens covers a lot of other extra greens, vitamins from the greens that we may not be getting the eight servings a day we're supposed to have. Um, super B, B vitamin is very important. C is very important, especially with the coronavirus out there. And D, vitamin D. Vitamin K is good for cardiovascular. I take vitamin K. And not all of these are Young Living, but 80% of my supplements are because they are amazing plant-based with essential oils, with the added benefits of the essential oils as well, which increases absorption rate of the, uh, the mineral or the vitamin that we need too. So I think they're fabulous. Um, uh, super calcium and a collagen supplement also, which is good for skin. I skip breakfast about three days a week, not by choice, just if I'm not hungry, I won't eat. Um, I, they say food is, a, uh, breakfast is a good part of the day, but I think it's okay to skip it sometimes if you're not hungry, um, but don't go too, too, too long. I try to, by the time noon rolls around, I, that's it, I'm, I bet, can't wait no more. Um, I try to have, when I do have breakfast, uh, other days a week, it's typically low sugar, like a Greek yogurt with added fruit, mango, perhaps. I'll have a banana, some strawberries, blueberries. Um, uh, if I really want to eat, I'll go for my couple of eggs. I'll make an omelet heavy with vegetables. I love sauteed vegetables like uh, spinach or kale or Swiss chard, uh, mushrooms, onions, um, asparagus, and stuff like that. I'll put in an uh, uh, omelet. Um, and I'll even add a slice of cheese because a little cheese ain't gonna hurt you either. Cheese is good for you, just not in excess. Whole grain toast, butter, love butter. Um, I haven't quite crossed over to the ghee line yet because ghee's quite pricey. <laughs> so I'll just have the butter. But ghee, they say, is an excellent source of uh, fat because our bodies do need some fat. So um, I will go for like whole grain waffles. I always, and if I, if I, um, I'll make my own pancakes and stuff. Um, you know, I just try to, if I buy anything in a box, I just read those ingredients. I'm looking for the companies that are putting out natural ingredients and less ingredients, simple ingredients, eight ingredients, not 30. Um, turkey, chicken, sausage, you know, if I want that with breakfast. Lunch, I love salads. I have lots of salads. I'll buy, they sell sweet potato wraps now, chia seed wraps. There's, you know, whole grain toast and bread. So there's so many options out there now and that, that tastes better. Um, than they used to, <laughs> I have to say, because there was a time where it wasn't that great. Um, I just realized I had my screen over here, so I'm not looking in the camera, and now I am. Um, so, but I'll have uh, like a turkey or a chicken, uh, chicken salad, and sometimes I'll just grill some chicken breasts for the week, and then when I have it for dinner, I'll take the leftover and make chicken salad out of it. Um, you know, one day a week, I may make a homemade soup. So I might have a little bowl of soup for lunch, a vegetable soup or something like that with bone broth. I love antipasta. Mediterranean diet's really good too. A little cheese, some olives, you know, some healthy crackers perhaps. Um, that's, that's okay to have for lunch. Um, I eat pizza, you know, I just try to be mindful of what's on it. And if I make my own, I try to be a little bit more particular about the crust and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I cheat sometimes. Um, in the midday, if I'm, uh, I'll also, uh, I think I said I apply my essential oils and stuff in the morning. And in the midday, sometimes I feel like I need to apply it again, depending on what I'm doing, because it just, after a while you get used to it, your body feels like it needs it and you're missing it. And I've actually witnessed that with my husband because he didn't start using essential oils right away like I did. And it took him a little bit to catch on. And once he started, he was getting more interested. And then when he had an issue, I was like, well, try this, try this, try this. And now I see him walking around with putting lavender and juniper on his mustache. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, he goes, it's helping me. It's making me feel better. Whatever, he's got his own regimen now going on. So, um, you know, but applying essential oils as needed throughout the day for emotions, for pain, for energy. Um, a drop of peppermint can do wonders, but a pe drop of peppermint in a glass of water is potent. Some people can do it. I would prefer that in a veggie capsule. Um, I believe, I believe peppermint has actually been banned from Olympic sports as because it's such a, a good energy stimulant. So 
it does work. <laughs> um, so mixed grain seeded crackers and stuff like that with the, maybe for a snack in the afternoon. Um, again, cheese, olives, a handful of fruit, um, a little bit of dark chocolate is good for you. Make sure it's 70% or better. Um, and then dinner, lean meat, fish, seafood, heavy veggies. I'll do potatoes and pasta, but not all the time. Um, but I've switched more to brown rice pastas. Tinky Yada is an amazing brand of brown rice pasta that tastes so good, especially if you love pasta. That's been hard for me. Um, or if you do have white pasta, and now they have garbanzo bean pastas and lentil pastas. So try some of the different ones that are out there. Some you're going to like, some you're not, but that's how you're going to find out. Um, if you do buy white pasta, I highly recommend, unfortunately, we to choose one that's made from Italy, comes from Italy, uh, because they banned the, the non-GMO, the non-GMO. So they're not going to be as taxing on your digestive system. Now it is white flour that still breaks down to a sugar, too much sugar in the body, you get into insulin resistance and other problems we talked about in part one. But, you know, just here in America, we're not producing, unless it says non-GMO in the box then you're probably okay. And then again, at, at bedtime, I try to avoid eating a couple hours before bed once in a while. Me and my husband, we want a snack or watch a movie. We'll go ahead and have, try to have healthy. He's, he's a little tougher, stop him, but I'll do like, um, like a ice pop or a fudge bar. And again, I shop for ingredients that are all natural, dark chocolate, fruit, popcorn with olive oil is amazing. You don't need butter. You could do butter, but olive oil. Um, but again, I try to avoid eating later at night for sure. Your body needs to rest. And at bedtime, I will um, diffuse my sleep oils. And I have a roller blend that everybody's going to get in the recipe in the link is for, um, for sleep. And I apply it to my Vitaflex and got my oils diffusing. I'm, I, my, my shoulder, my knees, whatever's bothering me, I have or is an oil for that. So I oil up and I'll walk in the store and people go, you can use essential oil. I'm like, you bet, <laughs> because you can smell them on me. Um, so, but if you don't like the topical application too much for some reason, then you just can diffuse, you can do some ingesting depending. Um, so that's pretty much my daily routine. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to know a little bit more about anything with Young Living, I can answer those questions. In closing, I would like to say that to choose plant-based, as much as you can, and that includes not just foods, essential oils, personal care items like deodorant, shampoo, soaps, the whole bit, cleaning products, um, supplements, uh, make sure you get proper sleep, exercise, and reduce those toxins with a little research and managing your stress. That's another tough one, but we can do it. And I will be glad to share all my links with everybody. Uh, my website, theoilrunners.com, I have a free newsletter on the argument lump that you can read. I think I shared the May link in the last um, email after the Sunday segment. And I guess that, that's about it. And thank you so much for having me um, to share and this time. Well, thank, thank you, Lisa. And um, you know, <laughs> you, you walk your talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is absolutely amazing. You you live the life that you preach to others, and and it's just wonderful to see that uh, all this knowledge you've applied not only to yourself but to your to your family and and willing to share. And you know, for those listening, we've hosted Lisa. I want to say this is the fourth or fifth time. Um, she is one of the most the most knowledgeable person uh, that I know. Uh, in this whole essential oil area in that she is using it day in and day out. And she is an educator um, in this area. And um, it's, it's just part of, part of her life. And so when you, you supplement with that or complement with that, just good uh, living habits like you've been suggesting about what to eat, when to sleep, Etc. Um, you you can you can see by your your the light <laughs> in in your in your around you and in your skin. You know you just you you exude the type of lifestyle that uh, you suggest to others. Yeah. So it's it's always just so 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 wonderful to have you, Lisa. And um, you're very generous with your your knowledge and your information. So we will be sure to get out to everybody um, that had registered for this that that second 
uh, set of, of links um, along with the uh, link to this this webinar. But, uh, is, very is, much. Thank you, uh, yeah, yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank Lisa. you so but much. There is one question from yes, uh, Maurice. From questions. Maurice, a friend of mine almost lost his sense of taste. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Is there a link with smell also that could uh, be he used for aromatherapy to improve it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have to look that up for you right off the top of my head because I don't want to say anything that's not accurate, but there is. I. And that's another thing that's important about support. Um, you know, like anybody that decided to, let's just say, even join in Young Living with me as their support by just using my reference number, they're going to get special support. And I'm going to make sure that's included in the links and just that little bit of information so people would be aware. The, the, it's going to send them to my website with a few links so they can see what I would offer and how they would go about receiving services. But the support is so important because I learn a lot in my oil community as well. And we share with each other. And the community is so important because everybody has different things going on and problems and situations. And there's an oil for that, you know, but it's not just the oil. It's also the lifestyle, like I talked about. So, you know, detoxing, you know, getting your body cleaner, like I said, is so important. And that, that's a first step, but there are aromatherapy and things that can enhance and help um, some situations even in the meantime, but it can get better once we eliminate some other lifestyle things that we might be doing that can be the first thing to start reducing some of those problems perhaps. And uh, I, have, I have one more question from my side. Uh, Radha, you wanted to say something? No, I, I didn't know you had a question. I was just going to uh, conclude. Okay. All right. Was, uh, I'm sorry, Vladimir. What was that again? You said he had to taste something with the, the taste. He can't, right. He, taste. He can't taste? Yes. Okay. He has a problem with the taste. Did he have coronavirus? I, could, I do not know. There is nothing sad about it. I was just wondering because that seems to be a, a, a big side effect for some people. Yeah, smell and taste. Yeah, wonder. people lose smell. Yeah, uh, I lose smell. Yeah. All okay. right. Um, I wanted to ask uh, something which is bothering me for quite some time. When yes. we were, when I was in India, uh, and we had very kind of royal uh, Indians uh, from uh, from Marwari families, very rich families, and they were inviting others for dinner. And the dinner was only to smell different herbs and different, you know, not to eat at all. There was nothing to eat. There was, uh, and I have a question. Can the smell or the, um, be nourishing our body? I think it can be because it's gonna, like I said, it goes work on a cellular level. So it could nourish, it can nourish emotions. It can nourish, you know, other needs that our body has. Energies, um, you know, yes, in a way. Absolutely, yeah. energy and 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 uh, the whole spectrum of emotions. There's there's so many different ways to support our emotions, which is a big place to start. You know, if we're trying to feed, um, satisfying something through aromatherapy, you know, certainly it's not gonna satisfy our hunger maybe i mean it's possible but maybe only for a little bit um well, can, can we can we say can we say that uh, this is a nourishment for our vital being or for our emotional being as absolutely report? absolutely oh. but it is 100%. a big nourishment in a hundred percent hundred percent yeah it, it it triggers i mean the the smells can trigger memories good memories right but they can oh, also memories trigger and... bad memories so it's yeah. very much connected to the vital and to the emotions mm -hmm. and therefore connected to the brain that's making also so, its own conclusions to it the endocrine system our hormones everything and you know there's like there's certain oils i can apply and i'm and when for what i need it for what i want to use it for and i feel like i get that you know it's, it's you don't know it until you experience it mm. and then or then when you experience it and then you want it again because you're not getting it or you're not feeling it and then you mm. use that oil again and it's 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 almost like an addiction mm. <laughs> but it's a good one mm -hmm. um so i i think 100 that it, it can do that you know, I would just add, because this is really interesting, that this issue of, of smell and, and what it can uh, trigger, you know, these atars that I think you may or may not have mentioned from India, these are very um, specialized essential oils that have been picked 
at the right time of the moon uh, with mantra, with prayers being said, um, very concentrated. And when you use them, they actually, or you don't even have to use them, you smell them. Yeah. And they have, they affect not only the physical and the emotional and mental, but they have this spiritual, they're very, very refined and potentized. Um, mm -hmm charged with this uh, 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 refined energy that it also is said to have an impact on, on the spiritual level and can open up, open up chakras, et cetera. So oh, it's yeah. And that's another I area I want to learn so badly that uh, there's, there's some, I have a lot of material on it and I've yet to dive in on it, the whole chakra and essential oils yeah. and how that can support your spiritual energy and, and all the Absolutely. chakras. And everything. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a whole, oh gosh, it's just a whole wide, wonderful world for that. And so you you're, you're going to have to just come back, Lisa, we're going to be <laughs> I would, hosting you for eternity, but I do, I would love to follow up with you personally and find out, you know, what hit me most in this session is we ought to be doing, uh, I ought to be using uh, some of these products and recommendations you, you made for clean, for the house cleaning and house maintenance, because I, I swear you open up under the sink, there's six, seven, eight different bottles and depending yeah. what I'm doing and, yeah. and there's no need for that is what I'm hearing. So this has been uh, incredibly helpful and I would like to, uh, to use, you know, some of your suggestions at LaGrasse and at my own home. So really, I'll, really. I'll uh, include, uh, if you give me just until the morning, even um, uh, a few extra tidbits on the link page that we'll send out to everyone in the email, but uh, make sure it's got just that little bit of extra information too, in case they're interested in knowing about that the cleaning specifically. I could even uh, have a link straight to the thieves cleaning page just so they can see it and look at it for themselves that way. But um yeah. yeah, and many more things, soaps and maybe washing body, shampoos, uh, sleeping things. We need uh, uh, this knowledge. We have, we want to introduce it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, little by little. And that's that's why I call it the ditch and switch because it could be mm -hmm. overwhelming to try to do everything all at once. So you just mm -hmm. decide what you want to start first, whether it be supplements out. Oh, and I have a link I'm sending to everybody. It's called, uh, I did a Facebook uh, post class called support your core. And it does talk about all of the supplements at young living, but at least it gives you an idea of what's in them and how they work and what they're mm -hmm. designed to do. And it is all about ones for your uh, immune system and your digestive system and stuff. So, but whether you wanted to start with essential oil use, supplement use, home cleaning, makeup. Oh my God. They have makeup. I use all mineral makeup because I got rid of all my chemical makeup. And I switched to that now for probably about four years I've been using it and I love it. And that's just another area that I don't have the toxins going into my body, you know, like the cleaning products, you know, I'm not breathing in all these chemicals, like, uh, you know, with when I'm cleaning my bathroom anymore, you know, and that we're walking around with brain fogs, headaches, migraines, nausea, uh, fatigue. I bet you half of it's from the, our own environment and our homes from the products that we're ingesting, consuming, applying, breathing in, you know, we can eliminate a lot of that. Our home should be a sanctuary. Our bodies should be. So at the very least, because there's only so much we could do with the outside world. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. I so really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Namaste. Hey, namaste. Bye. Namaste.